Monday Health Minutes, sponsored by Valley Health. Hi, I'm Melanie Schaefer. Welcome to Monday Health Minutes with Valley Health. Being a caregiver can be so rewarding. It can also be really stressful as you care for either your children or your aging parents. So how do you identify the signs of caregiver stress and what can be done about it? We're talking with psychiatrist Dr. Scott Murphy about that today. Thanks for being here. Sure. What clues you in that this is a sign that I'm super stressed as a caregiver? So it is important to recognize caregiver stress and some of the signs that you might notice would be feeling tired, feeling like you don't have room in your life to enjoy things anymore, feeling a sense of frustration. Um, when we go into a caregiving situation, we're coming from a place of caring, and that's why it's in the term. Mm -hmm. um, but if that starts to transform into more exhaustion and frustration, it can actually undermine our ability to help our loved ones. So what do, you, what do you do about it? What can be done? Should you talk with your primary care provider? What kind of resources out there to kind of help with this very heavy lift of caring for the people you love? Sure. So um, there, are, there are, for example, some associations that uh, provide resources for caregivers. Um, the Alzheimer's Association is a very good resource. Their website is very comprehensive. It includes t tips for everyday life when you're caring for a loved one who has dementia. Um, they have a 24-7 helpline that can be called. They can um, help to identify and connect with local resources. So um, there are some things in the community that people may not know about, such as an adult day care center um, or an adult day center. And that provides a, a social outlet for your loved one that you're caring for, but also gives you a, a well-needed break and a chance to sort of catch up on errands, to get some rest, um, to do some things that you may have put on the back burner while caring for your loved one. Um, there are respite care options as well, so that maybe there is a, a different environment where your loved one can stay for a few days, just to let the family sort of rest and catch up on life and come back into their caregiving with um, a, a new sort of motivation and, and, and a fresh approach. There's so many families that deal with this because Alzheimer's numbers, dementia numbers are skyrocketing. So what kind of toll does it take on your physical and emotional health when you don't pause the brakes, find some respite and get mm -hmm. some help? Well, I, would, I always like to say it's very similar to the type of burnout that we can see in healthcare providers. Um, when we are working in the healthcare professions, we're prone to thinking we can do anything and work as many hours as we need to and to take on a lot of additional stress and can sometimes feel guilty if we're not able to do that. It's even more stressful for a caregiver, I will say, because while my shift at a hospital might come to an end and I can go home, if you're caregiving for a loved one, that can be a 24-hour day job, seven days a week, without holidays off. And so um, recognizing our limits and trying not to connect those limits with a feeling of guilt is incredibly important. It is okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for a break, for someone else to sort of help to, to shoulder the, the load, as it were. Um, reaching out to friends and family, um, getting someone to cover things so that we can go to the bank and go to the grocery store, things like that. And do it by yourself, and, and I think to normalize it, it's, it's normal to feel like this if you feel overwhelmed and, and you need to take a, a moment. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Oh. It's really important not to neglect our physical health as caregivers mm -hmm. too. Finding a place to, and a time to get some exercise in, making sure that you're not neglecting your own basic needs like mm -hmm. nutrition um, and self-care. Um, those are a big part of making yourself at your best so that you can do your best for your loved one. Yeah, great advice. We can't burn the candle at both ends without having some kind of effect from it. You're right. Great. Dr. Murphy, thank you so much. Some encouraging words for everyone out there that's trying to keep their loved ones in good health and happy and be the best caregiver they can. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for checking in for Monday Health Minutes.